Welcome back everybody to the third and final installment of our CNC enclosure build project. In today's video, we complete the enclosure which will serve two specific functions. The first is to reduce noise and the second to keep dust and debris contained within the enclosure. Now we've also incorporated some additional features like tool organization and easy access to the dust collection system. So stick around to the end to see all the details. Now, thanks again for checking this out. And if you're enjoying this content, please smash that like button, subscribe and hit the notification bell for future content. Now let's get started. East Wing Vintage Woodworking. Referring back to Engineering Workshop's build, Hunter points out that he wanted to use a Shapoko to manufacture all the panels for the enclosure, but wasn't able to because his machine shipped, unfortunately with a bad wire, rendering it useless until the manufacturer could ship out a new one. As you can see, the machine is cutting out the windows and adding the rabbit, which will allow a place to insert the polycarbonate panel. At the time of this build and having zero experience using Carbide 3D's Carbide Create software, I made an attempt to design and use my Shapoko to manufacture each of the panels. Now the software is very intuitive and making the panels was a lot easier than I thought. Currently the machine is cutting out a dado which will hold the drawer slide. Right here I'm using holding clamps to secure the next panel. Before I can start on the next panel, I have to zero my workpiece so the machine knows exactly where to start. This accessory is called the bit zero and helps accomplish this task. I set the bit zero on the corner of my workpiece and attach a magnetic lead to the spindle. This lead allows your spindle to create an electrical connection between it and the bit zero. The included carbide motion software has a built-in probing function that moves the spindle within the bit zero, automatically calculating X, Y, and Z's zero. Now that the panels are complete, I decided to use a domino joiner to connect each panel. This domino joiner is fairly new and I've used it dozens of times, but every time I've used it and I see the results, I'm still amazed at how well this thing works. There are two separate sections that make up the entire enclosure. Right here, we're assembling the rear section. After making sure the panels line up, I glue and use an 18 gauge brad nailer to permanently attach the side panels to the top panel. Here, the foreman decided to drop in and pay me a visit to make sure I was staying on task. Yeah. 
Before I can assemble the frame for the rear of the enclosure, I need to cut rabbits in all four pieces, so I decided to use my routing table with the half inch rabbiting bit to get this done. When this frame is assembled and installed, it'll be used to accommodate an access panel in the rear of the enclosure. Next step is to assemble the front section of the enclosure. What's different here is the front part of the enclosure contains rails on top made from T-Track. The T-Track is going to be used as guides for the door of the enclosure. Here I'm marking out where I want all my dominoes to land. I decided to paint the interior of the enclosure a gloss white. I think this looks the cleanest and will do a great job at reflecting the interior lights. Now it's time to join the two halves of the enclosure together. We do this by installing the drawer slides into the dados we cut out at the beginning of the project. The purpose of the drawer slides is not only to hold the enclosure together, but to also give you the ability of sliding the front part of the enclosure over the rear part of the enclosure. I'll demonstrate this once we install the enclosure on the cabinet. I drilled holes in the bottom part of the frame and used two and a half inch construction screws to secure it to the cabinet. I also installed the piano hinges and latches off camera. Cut pocket holes in the rear panels to completely secure the enclosure to the cabinet. The sliding action of the enclosure is working exactly as planned. However, it is a bit sticky in a couple of areas. But not to worry, I have a solution. I knew those extra skateboard bearings would be useful someday. I'm using an eye hook and a tiny bungee cord here. This is a perfect solution for securing the dust hose. Unfortunately, I lost some of my footage when assembling the front panel door, but here I am attaching the quarter inch polycarbonate panel. All of the see-through panels I'm using in this project are quarter inch thick polycarbonate. I bought them off of Amazon. They come in two foot by four foot sheets. I cut them to their final dimensions using my table saw. The added benefit of using polycarbonate is its shatter resistance. It's also lightweight, has high optical clarity, high heat resistance, and excellent electrical resistance. Here is a closer look at the T-Track that's going to serve as a guide for the enclosure door. I installed a 3 8 inch dowel rod in the door to act as a guide that will run in the T-Track. I'll install the door here to demonstrate how this is supposed to work. 
Easy breezy. You know the rest. We're going to take the door off here and install the handles. battery died on my camera while shooting the footage for the installation of the rear panel door. With the project completed, I'm going to do a quick demonstration and walk around to show you all the features. I use the machine to cut these tool organizers. The plans are available on Engineering Workshop's Etsy store. I'll put a link in the description below. However, the second drawer tool organizer is of my design. I haven't figured out how I'm going to organize these other three drawers, but as of this recording, I'm using them to hold various items like other small tools, fasteners, epoxy, etc. I purchased a laptop swivel mount from Amazon. It's very sturdy and works very well. I mounted it on the side of the cabinet with the included lag bolts. I purchased an extra long USB cable and ran it from the control board through the cabinet and out to the swivel mount to connect to the computer. The dust extraction works extremely well, and having this access panel makes for easy removal of the dust separator for easy salt dust disposal. One of the added benefits of having this rear panel door is the ability to pass through large items or easy access to the rear of the machine to clamp down large projects. The only additional modification I foresee myself doing in the future is modifying the interior lighting. I'm not too happy with the way I installed the LED strips. I know I can improve it. So if you have any suggestions, please leave me a comment. I'll conclude this video with a little project that I was working on. This is for a friend of mine. It's a cigar ashtray with the Cal State Berkeley logo. I used a 1 16th down cutting bit to engrave the logo, a little less than an eighth of an inch deep. I then filled the engraving with the appropriate colored epoxy. Here, I programmed the machine to use a 1 inch bowl cutting bit to clean up the excess epoxy. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe for future content. I also ask that you please leave a comment and if you have any questions, I will do my best to answer them. Thanks again for watching. See you next time on East Wing Vintage Woodworking.